<laughs> All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and connect this to the computer, like so. Cool. Now, there's no, there's no firmware on this. There's no software on the Arduino. Right. We're going to have to put it on. Uh, something real quick. If you go to my, go to my computer, Alex, uh, if you've been playing with a lot of Arduinos, what might happen is you might end up with a lot of different Arduinos in your device list. Uh, that can be confusing because you're not sure which one is the one that you just plugged in. If you're running a Windows box, if you go to Properties into the Device Manager and then go down to the COM ports, you actually find out which one it is. So right now, this is hooked up as serial port 3, COM 3. Okay. But like if I, if I had had many, many devices plugged into this computer, different types of Arduinos, mm -hmm. um, it might be COM 6. Actually, if you go back to that screen, you can see how many I've had active at any given point, because I'm on eight. seven and eight at, yeah. the, at the end. <laughs> so just, just know that's, that's sort of a cheat. That's an easy way. So I know okay. I'm connected to COM port 3. Cool. I put a link into the show notes for the software that we're going to be using. It's called the BL, the Blue Heli Suite. Uh, the latest version is 14401. Mm. This is the software that's going to allow us to reprogram our ESCs. Okay, yeah, because I've never used anything other than the Arduino IDE. Precisely, yeah. precisely. So if you go ahead and go to my, uh, my computer again, Alex, this is what it looks like. I'm just going to start it up. Uh, again, I've put the link for, for the software into, uh, into the, sh the show notes, so you can just get them from there. This is what it looks like. The first thing I have to do, if you go and zoom in on that, Alex, the first thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to program my Arduino so that it knows how to talk to the ESC. Huh, okay. And uh, that means I'm going to go to here, make interface. So this is going to turn the Arduino into an interface between the computer and the ESC. That's awesome. Right. I have to choose the type of Arduino I'm using. I, and actually, I have this in the right one. But there's so many different types. So Ooh. I don't have to use the Nano. I could use the full-size board. It's just the, the Nano is kind of the right size for me. Uh, yeah, we wouldn't want the full-size board. It would be kind of overkill. Yeah. It would be very <laughs> overkill. So I'm using a Nano with an Atmega 328. Uh, make sure you match it up with the one that you've got. I, it's not going to destroy it. It just won't work properly. Right. And then you get to load, load the type of bootloader you want. In this case, I'm, I'm playing with BL Blue Heli ESCs, so that's what I'm going to load up. Huh. And so, yes, okay. it's going to take some time. It's going to connect. It's going to push the firmware, and then I'm going to get a confirmation. Boom. Okay, Arduino has been successfully flashed. That's cool. So now this Arduino knows how to talk to the ESCs, and it knows how to talk to the computer, so it becomes the, the man in the middle. It's the, it's the translator. Yeah, yeah, right? that's cool. Okay, so if you go back to the interface, uh, notice how it's going to say, please select SI Labs or Atmel. This is it saying, what type of ESC are you going to have me connected to? Mm, okay. There are different types, and unfortunately, you're going to have to find out which version of the ESC and what kind of chip your ESC is using. And you got your ESCs from Ready to Fly Quads? Ready to Fly Quads. These were the, uh, the uh, mi uh, micro bees or mini bees. Mini bees. So I'm going to be using this. This is the Scilabs Blue Heli Bootloader USB uh, COM. Okay. Okay. You could choose which one. You might have an Atmel chipset, you might have an SI Labs. You choose the one that you're actually using. So now it knows how to communicate and it knows what language to speak. Cool. All right. So now let's go back to the stand, the, the SI Labs ESC setup. I need to connect the ESC to this so that it could read. Now remember, the the front two motors were good. Mm -hmm. The rear two motors were reversed, right? Right. So if you go to the overhead area here, Alex, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the left rear motor, and I'm going to connect it so that ground goes there. So this is what it's going to look like. Okay. Okay. And that's why I only use three pins because if I use the full row, I kind of I could make a mistake. There's only three pins here. As long as I put the black on ground, we're we're happy. Nice. Okay. So I need to give power to this because while I'm connected, the ESC is not yet powered on. So we're gonna do this. Okay. So battery power. Right. So now it's got power. If you go back to my screen, Alex, the first thing I need to do is I need to read the settings. It needs to know what is the ESC setup for right now. So I have to tell it, so it's on COM3. So I've gone to USB COM3, oh, oh it's down below. Uh, there we go. That menu right there. So this menu allows you to set the COM. You're going to be talking at uh, 19,200. That's 19,200 uh, 19, baud. That's your communication rate. And then you're going to click read. When you click read, mm -hmm. there you go. It says ESC1 setup read successfully. Now, here's the thing. 
I'm only going to show one aspect of the software, yeah. but this is quite possibly the best way to tweak your quad. I'd say this is actually even more important than the flight controller, because flight controllers are pretty much, we know how to, how to dial them in. Right. But a properly set up ESC can turn your gentle quad into a racing monster. That's what I was about to ask, was that the next step, can you like, not overclock, but I guess tweak the ESC so you, you can so tweak. <laughs> I mean, here, if you go back to the screen, look at all the different, and this is not as advanced as it gets. These are all the different parameters I've got. One of my favorite is you can enable braking. These motors have the ability to apply a magnetic field that actually stops the motor. So imagine that. Remember how we talked about one of the issues of a quadcopter, especially one with bigger blades, is it takes a while for the motors to spin down. So right. even when you're not supplying power to it, you won't get as fast of a turn because the inertia kind of carries them for a while, right? Right, right. This could, you can actually program this to say, when it be goes less than 20% throttle on a motor, don't just let it spin down, apply a braking force. You could make the craft violently rock from oh, one side to the that's other. that's awesome. I mean, you can, I mean, the, the, all those videos where you see people doing ridiculous mm -hmm. acrobatics, they've got braking enabled, which okay. allows them, you know, rather than having the, the quad do this sort of like, right. you know, it's that, like one side just drops. Oh, no, that's amazing. Yeah, because there there's actually people in the chat room who are like, oh, isn't this kind of overkill to try and dial in your ESCs like that This for this project? And uh, I think we just realized, no, it's not, because then you can dial it in so precisely and do like those acrobatic stuff. Oh, yeah. Stuff. yeah. I, I will say, <laughs> become a good pilot before you start doing that. Yeah. This, this actually <laughs> led to the demise of my last uh, Know How 250 class craft. Oh, uh, ouch. I thought it was awesome yeah. how, how quick I turned, but it really goes out of control very quickly, too. Were so. you doing it by FPV, or were you No, I was, I was line eyeball? of sight, but when you can put a braking force, you can do flips so quickly. Right, right, jeez. Uh, so if, if you're tweaking the ESCs and say you're not 100% sure what the tweak is going to do, should you just slowly increment just it slowly as you go along? Slowly increment, yeah. yeah. And just know that, as, especially as you're just learning it, it is an experimental craft, so make sure that it's near, <laughs> nowhere near anything that you value. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Okay, uh, so back to the screen. Okay. I know that this ESC is rotating the wrong direction, right? So all I have to do is this. Perfect. That's it. So I take that, and I, it, it, if you look to the bottom here, Alex, there's a little button called Right Setup. And when I click Right Setup, ah, there you go. That makes so sense. Now that ESC knows to rotate the other direction. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and disconnect this. I'm going to power down. I'm going to reconnect this to my servo tester, and I'm going to power up just that motor. Uh, get this right. There we go. Like this, like this, and if you uh, show the little action cam, Brian. Yeah. Remember, this was spinning the this was spinning counterclockwise. We wanted it to spin clockwise. Now, it's spinning clockwise. Clockwise, awesome. No soldering, no cutting of the cables. That's it's now spinning in the proper direction. Nice. 